How did you become homeless? Shit. Give me the story behind that. Shit, you know, I, I grew up with a single mother and shit, so it went like she used to work a lot and ain't nobody had, ain't had nobody to like watch over me, babysitting and shit. I used to get off the bus by myself. She used to have like a little key, house key wrapped around a Timberland shoestring and shit. And every time I used to go outside, she just make sure, you don't leave your book bag, don't leave your motherfucking coat, don't leave my house key, you know? But goddamn, since I ain't really had nobody, I was always like outside, cause you know, I was told to stay inside, of course. Don't open the door for nobody. I didn't the motherfucking president. Don't open the door. So, you know, I used to go out the door. So I got that problem. So I used to be outside a lot of shit. So I guess her not being there, you know, always working and shit, we kind of started like button heads. You know, I think I knew everything. I'm outside and shit. I'm young. I'm at the bottom of the hill. Not playing ball, you know, hanging out with the tough guys and all that shit. So I was a hothead and shit. So just basically butt heads and put my black ass out. Shit, you got to go. You don't want to follow my rules, you don't want to listen to me, go listen to them. And I mean, yeah, I guess it was my own undoing. I don't think I don't think she should let my ass go, but she let my ass up out of it. I guess I had to learn, so pretty much went like that. I ain't know what the fuck I was doing. That's how I ended up homeless. You know, I couldn't come back. I was still a hothead. I used to, you know, want to come back. It's got cold out here. I ain't got no money. I'm hungry. You know what I'm saying? I'm staying at my auntie's house, staying at my friend's house, staying at this friend's house. They don't really want me to. So, so I went. Learned to respect some shit. What age did this start? You becoming homeless? Shit. Like, like 13, 14? Nah, fuck that. Well, yeah, about 13, 14. That's when I started coming out hot head. I've been coming in by myself. But that's when I started rebelling and shit. Probably like, probably like that middle school shit. You know, I got kicked out of middle school for like, what the fuck I do to them niggas? I like, something happened on the bus. Man, long story short, something happened on the bus. I bought a knife. I was trying to get, um, get action. I got, I didn't get kicked out because it was on the bus. It was like some neighborhood shit. But I guess, got them my the neighborhood talk. People caught wind of it. You know, mm. Kid got them, got me up out of there, and that's when I started turning up crazy. Like, fuck, are you tripping? We already done tried to move schools, get you out of the neighborhood, put you over here, you're doing the same shit, you gotta go. So like 13, 14, freshman in high school, yeah, started turning up. Yeah. So you ended up becoming kicked out of that school? Um, I didn't, it, it happened so fast. Like, this is what it was, it happened over the weekend, it was a Friday. You know, when I bought the knife on the bus and stuff. So, you know, I had Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I got moved Monday. So I don't know if I was going to get suspended or not. Probably so. I ain't, I ain't get to find out because over the weekend it got so crazy that they was talking about doing something to me on Monday morning at the bus stop. So, goddamn, got up out of there. Shout out my dudes. I don't know what happened. They probably would have jumped me or something. I don't know. I've been all right. Okay, so just for clarification, you never did get kicked out of that school. No, I didn't. Nah. Hell nah. Your mom just moved you to a different school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, what middle school was that at the time before you ended up changing schools? Uh, that was Lewis Chapel. My hometown was called Lewis Chapel Middle. You know, on the west side and shit. I was over there with them west side motherfuckers. And then that one, she moved me to Luther, New Jersey. That's on the east side, yeah. And what hometown is this you're referencing? Fayetteville, North Carolina. Now, how long did you end up becoming homeless for? We know when it started. Mm. When did it end? Shit, bro, it ain't never really end. It's just I was biting my tongue, tucking my tail, and I was like, I'm going to have to listen to this lady if I want to eat, eat a hot meal and take a shower. So it ain't never really end. It's just I bit my tongue, I got in there. But... We used to have go through spurts and shit. We used to argue and all that shit. Pack your shit up, get the fuck out. On oh, you starting again. Damn. I'll be gone for like two weeks, three weeks, come back. I miss you. I miss you too. Then we get right back into it, goddamn, get the fuck out. Oh. You know what I'm saying? That shit made me, bro. Cause I never really, it got to the point where when I used to pack my shit, I ain't never unpacked. 
because I never was going to stay long. So when I used to bring my shit back, keep my duffel bags right by the bed, because it could go up in that bitch at any moment. You know, so when it's time for me to pack my shit and get out, <clears throat> out of there. That way y'all bitches can't kick me out. Right now. I'll be already ready on go. I'll be gone. You know what I'm saying? That shit made me, though. But you're not homeless now. Hell nah. I got like three cribs. That's why I'm saying it ended at some point. Well, yeah, okay, so what was it? I know it happened in spurts, yeah. but what do you think that time period was? Okay, age 13 was when it started. Mm. Well, when do you think you really, when did it end? You said it never really ended, so I don't well, know. No, what you, so okay. it ain't really until I got my own crib, like 22. Because, you know, after I graduated, it was a wrap. I could never come back in. That shit was dead. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, after I graduated, I was back on the streets, you know. Like, 22 when I got my first crew, 21, 22. When you got kicked out for the very first time at 13 and things started at that point, what was the longest stint you were homeless for? Oh, uh, shit. You mentioned something for two weeks here or three weeks there, but what was the longest stint you stayed out of the house for? You were homeless. Shit, like, three months. And that's when it first looked like the first one was the longest one. The first and the second, it was like three months. And then it was three months regular, like on some out to school year shit. And it was another three months, three, four months for the summer. I got kicked out for the whole summer, man. I was supposed to be going to goddamn meet meet my pops and shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't meet him when I was 18, you know, uh, unfortunately. But goddamn, I was supposed to be meeting my pops. But, um, I'm tripping. It was middle school was the longest three months. And then sometime around like after the like sophomore year and shit, it was like another three months and shit. Three, four months. And anything in between was like three weeks, four weeks, a month. Nothing really got past like three months because I guess she used to miss me and shit. Hell yeah. Even though you would go through these spurts, you were still able to graduate high school? Fuck yeah, uh, yeah, I ain't no dumb motherfucker. And you were able to graduate on time? Hell yeah, yeah, with extra credits too. And what high school do you end up graduating from? Terry Sanford. Was that the only high school you attended? Uh, yeah, no, fuck no. I mean, the other ones don't count, they count though. But damn, like when I used to go to other high school, I used to get in trouble and get kicked out. I went to E.E. E. Smith, you know, when I first moved to the east side, you know, I went to E.E. Smith for like, Two days, you know, goddamn, they try to jump me in that bitch, you know, goddamn. I ain't a lot of boys chasing me about that bitch. All by myself, you know, I, I, by myself, I ain't got nobody. So, yeah, I went there for like two days, popping that shit, being me. They ain't like it. I've been on the West too long, I don't know. Got introduced to some East Side shit, but I got up out of there. Shit, so she moved me out of there. So, goddamn, that's when I got started rebelling, I got kicked out, went to my aunt house for like three, four months, and I was going to uh, Terry Sanford from out there and shit. My cousin, she used to goddamn get me out the bus, goddamn drive me home, or I used to just chill over there when me and my peoples ain't beefing and shit. Hell yeah. Went there for like two days. Uh, I went to Bird for like a week, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of, uh, I got accused of some stuff I ain't do with a group of individuals that ain't my friends. I don't know why they ain't believe me, but yeah, I got kicked out of there. And then Southview, I went there for like another four days. We got to fight in there, the basketball game on Friday. Went up in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? I reintroduced my knife. Hell yeah. And then I went to Terry Sanford, and I was cool, I was chilling. I liked that. It was a different environment. I liked it. It was cool. Hell yeah. Explain, what what was it about that school that you were able to stay and finish out? Shit, for real, for real. Man, I Terry Sanford like two schools in one. I ain't trying to sound, you know, you know, racist or nothing like that, but you know, you had, you know, Terry Sanford over here with the the brighter complexion people, and then you had Terry Sanford over here with the, the brown skin complexion people. And with that being said, like, you know, you had to be from a certain area to go over there. So I guess I got sent to the good school. And it worked out for me, because won't nobody on the type time I was on. Like, won't nobody on that? Like, oh, bro, chill, relax, bro. Why? You was intense, relax. 
we good over here, you know? So it was cool. Like, I ain't had no problems over there, you know? They ain't mess with me and I ain't mess with them. So only thing I could do was my work. It wasn't no action. It was a little action, but it wasn't, nothing. It wasn't no action. So I couldn't do nothing but go to class, you know, I rock with the females and shit, but shit, that's about it. Go to class, do your work. You know, when school's out, you know, hang with the bitches. It was cool. I, I needed that shit. I don't know where the fuck I was at. God damn. Did you get into it with anyone over the females? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Because you said it was a little action, so I didn't know if yeah. that was what caused that it little action. It sure the fuck or... was. You good. It sure the fuck was. Man, those bitches like me, and I be liking bitches, so they don't be telling the truth all the time, though. Like, you know, bitches be having, like, girls... Boyfriends and shit, you know, brothers, whatever the fuck that shit mean. And you know, you know, who's this guy? Who's the new guy? What, man, who's that? You know, so like that. On oh, trade, what's up? What's happening? You know what I'm saying? You hold my book back, ain't gonna do nothing. All right. There's a lot of that. I ain't never really had to put nobody down, though. I ain't have to stab nobody, I ain't have to punch nobody. None of that. It was like everybody knew how to verbalize their problems. That shit was new for me, you know talk stuff out without using your hands. So that's why I learned that I got cultured there, you know, yeah. So in this interview, you talked about pulling a knife out twice. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you actually ended up pulling it out or you just brought it with you. Yeah, I used to bring that bitch with me. You never pulled it out? The other than two times, yeah. Oh, so you did pull it out with twice. Once on a bus stop when I got kicked out and then when I went to Southview with the basketball game, yeah, I was trying to hit shit then. But other than that, I used to just have it on me, invisible. I used to have it clipped on my little little pocket on my jeans, little pocket knife, whip it out. And then I had a butterfly knife. That shit was cool. That was for the bitches though. Conversation piece and shit. How nasty with that bitch. Yeah, yeah. The knife was pulled, but you never ended up using it. Nah, I ain't use that bitch. Nah, I was young and shit. I just wanted the motherfuckers to leave me alone and shit. I be by myself a lot. So that was my first weapon before I, you know, the pistols and got them you know, sticks and shit. I had a knife, up close, all action. Hell yeah. Did it work? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ain't nobody mess with me. They were kicking me out. They try to make me the bad guy. I'm on defense. Now, you mentioned your aunt and you mentioned cousins in this interview as well. Yeah. These were all on your mother's side? Yeah, 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 yeah. You also mentioned your father in this interview. Your yeah. parents had split at some point. Yeah, at some point, yeah. What age were you when they had split? Uh, zero years old. Okay. Yeah. Not alive yet. And uh, they were never married? Nah. Now, the feeling of being homeless. Okay, there's people watching this interview right now. Yeah. That's seen homeless people. Yeah. Heard the phrase homeless. Yeah but don't know what that actually feels like. I know you've been homeless on various stints, three months being the longest on a couple occasions, mm. but what is that feeling like of being homeless? Are you able to describe that feeling? I mean, shit, the best words I can feel is like helpless, confused, angry as fuck, you know, shit, powerless, you know, Got to roll with the punches, so to speak. You're going to get punched up, too. You got to roll with them bitches. You're homeless. What the fuck you going to do? Everything you do, you depending on somebody else. You on everybody else's time. You ain't got shit. You ain't worth shit. Nothing, nigga. You know? Go do something. How am I supposed to do something? I ain't got no tools. I ain't got no tools. I can't make nothing happen. I need tools. You know? That shit made me, though. You know? Made my own tools. There are different levels of being homeless. Facts. For you, what was the bottom point of being homeless? When I said, made me say, fuck that shit and go get it, get shit popping. When I was, man. When I, I wouldn't got... say that. I would say, when I say, what's the bottom point? I mean, what was the worst point of being homeless? Because you had mentioned there would be times you'd be at your aunt's house or your cousin's house and they didn't want you there and things of that nature. Yeah. But what was the worst moment, the bottom point of any of those homeless stints that you experienced? What was the bottom point? Was there ever a point where 
you held a sign begging for money, or you were oh, asking for money. Did it ever get that far? Hell nah. I ain't no sucker now. But nah, I ain't, I ain't never begged for money and asked for money. Like, the worst point, it was just like me thinking motherfuckers love me and fuck with me. You know, I had somebody had my back, and I just realized I really didn't. I really on myself. That when I was staying, like, with my auntie. You know, I love my auntie, though. She gonna see this shit. I love her. She looked out for me when nobody would, and my cousins. But, like, the moment was when, like, you know, my auntie, she got them a little throw it off, but it's all love. She ain't really, she ain't want a lot of people in the house and shit, because we used to always be in that motherfucker. So, you know, she'll go through her spurts, too, just like my mama. That's her sister. So she'll go through her spurts, and she kick everybody the fuck out, too. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, her kids, you know, they can come back. But me... You know, they bought me. My cousins bought me over there feeling bad for my ass. So sometimes I used to have to got them sit on the porch and shit hours and hours, you know, until auntie wake up and go to work. And my cousins, they used to let me come in the house and shit, eat, take a shower and shit, get right, lay down, and wake my ass up when she coming home. I get my ass back outside. That shit won't cool there. That's the shit I like, man. This shit is too damn much. I'm buckling under pressure, man. Physically, did you notice differences with you during your homeless stints? Would there be weight loss, things of that nature? Hell yeah, yeah, I was skinny and shit, weight fluctuating. I was skinny and shit, I'm healthy and shit. Nah, I was little and shit, man. I got them twigs or something, man. Mentally, you mentioned that there was anger. Uh, was there ever depression when you were homeless? Yeah, yeah. I ain't got nobody. I'm out there on my own, but you know, Percocets, you know, Percocets and got a Hennessy, uh, my medicine and shit. Shit made me. I'll be cool. You were self prescribing yourself this? Self medicating for sure. Depression real as hell. Did you have suicidal thoughts hell during no. your homeless stint? Fuck, no, I ain't no sucker. Hell no. Nah. Nah, hell no. Nah. Harming myself. Fuck that. I love me. Was there ever, well, okay. Um, did you ever get, whether it was during the homeless stint or after it, far after it, uh, ever got professional help dealing with the mental side of things? Yeah. From this? Yeah, I got some. Yeah, I got some now and shit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, got them counseling. I don't go, though. I, they make me go, but I don't. I don't know that shit. I ain't got time for that shit. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. Don't I look fine? Damn. I'm all right, y'all. I don't need that shit. Uh, who's making you? Oh, my probation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got, got the yeah, probation. Then they got them. They flagged me, violated me for mental health. So now I got probation on top of probation. So like I got two. I got a mental health probation. I got a real one. But I don't go to that shit. So, you know. Fuck that. I'm gonna start going though so I can do more interviews because if I don't go, y'all ain't gonna see much of me no more. And there was a turning point where you actually get your own spot, your own place. Thanks. Uh, how were you able to do it? What, get my own spot? Yeah. Shit. Bitch. Shit. I, she was my girl, but we was cool. You know, she kind of, she probably felt bad for me. Like, when I used to get be left out on my porch and shit, like, I used to come home and shit, you know, we was on the block and shit, so girls just come down there, you know, got down with the little short song, you know, snatch me one up and shit, so shit, I used to be on the porch, I used to text and she let me come through to her mama house. So now I'm in there and shit, take a shower, lay down and shit. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't really my girl. It's just like, I guess she like felt bad for me. She said, maybe she seen a star or some shit, but uh, yeah, this bitch out there, yeah, facts. She looked out for me. She moved in a spot. I helped her move into the spot, you know, rent deposit. I was in there, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, yeah, I was on my, uh, I was on my stepdaddy shit, you know? Hell yeah, yeah, I was in that motherfucker. Now there may be some people watching this that may ask, why does she have to be a B word? I ain't wanna, she's not my girlfriend. I was about to call her my girlfriend, but that ain't it. So, this female that helped me. You know, 
You may have answered this next question already throughout our interview, but I'll still ask it directly, okay? okay. In case you have a different answer, you want to add on to the answer, or maybe you didn't even say it, but yeah. what did this entire experience teach you? What did you learn from being homeless, if anything? Shit. And if you answered this already, then you don't have to answer it. I learned not to shit. I learned not to take no shit. I learned to watch my own back. If you want something done, you got to do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't be on nobody. Don't don't be on nobody time. Make motherfuckers on your time. You know, don't trust nobody. Don't love too much. You know, just stay vigilant. Tunnel visions. Don't let shit distract you. Motherfuckers say they with you. They ain't with you. Everybody wants something for nothing. Or everybody wants something for something. Yeah, yeah. That shit gonna make you though. If you could turn back the hands of time, would you have done anything different? Hell yeah, I would have shut the fuck up and abide by the rules. That shit wasn't cool. I really was my own undoing. But shit, my mama kind of throw it off too, though. I really ain't feel like I was doing too much. But I definitely could have tightened up with the whole talking back and shit. You know, my mouth crazy. I will admit I'm disrespectful motherfucker, but I be trying to chill and work on myself. What do you want people to know about those who are homeless? Hey, don't be shitting on homeless. Don't be shitting on homeless people, bro. I always help. Like motherfuckers with the signs, always give money, always give back. That's how you get your blessings. You know what I'm saying? I never dwelled on my situation. I just knew when I make out this gym, y'all gonna be sorry. Y'all sorry now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, don't shit on nobody because they ain't a fucked up situation. You just never know where they gonna be. You don't know shit. That shit temporary. Let's say someone's watching this and they're homeless themselves. And again. Circumstances could be different for everybody. There's different levels of being homeless. But generally speaking, anything you would say to someone watching this that's homeless right now? Man, listen, that shit ain't over. Do what you gotta do every day. You wake up, wake up like you in a fucking mansion and you worth a million dollars. It's gonna come. You gotta stay consistent though. You gotta help yourself. Can't wait for nobody to help you because nobody gives a fuck, bro. Remember that shit. So you got to help yourself. You got to make shit happen for yourself. You got to look out for you. Before you look at anybody else, you got to look out for you. You know what I'm saying? Anything else you want to mention about your homeless experience? Or is there a question I didn't ask people want to know about being homeless? Um, hell nah. You see the motherfuckers on the street when you ride through. Don't be them. You know what I'm saying? Whether you gotta abide by the rules or you gotta learn how to get up there and make something out of nothing. You know, it's all about you though, and yeah, yeah, how you conduct your business and yourself. You ain't gonna end up like that if you, you know what I'm saying, you got some, you know, you got some get up and go about you and you can think clearly, you know. You, you know, don't be stupid, you know. Simple shit for real. Have you mentioned this in your music? The homeless experience? Hell nah. All I talk about is the good times because I got too many bad times, so I be trying to turn up, party and shit. I don't want, hell nah. Hell nah. I don't want to remember that shit. Hell nah. I don't want to remember none of that shit. I act like it ain't even happened. That whole blank, that whole spot in my shit, that shit blank.